Hello, I'm Princess Serena, not Princess Serena, and I have painted quite a bit of pin canvases recently, so I thought it'd be fun to show them off. I am by no means an artist, but I'm pretty impressed by the end result, to be honest. And four of these are a result of trying to make room for a new collection. They're technically not Disney pins, but they're Disney inspired pins in a way. More on that on a future video. I want Wanted to create more room with what I already had without adding too many more boards so I thought it'd be fun to separate my smaller collections in smaller canvases. So without further ado, let's get into it. You can sort of see it through in the back so I thought it'd be cool to show you to see if you could guess what it is and what type of pins can be on it. So it was a chef hat and it is for my hide and squeak ratatouille collection. It's a 12 pin collection. I have seven of them currently. And when you have all 12, it makes up the ingredients for ratatouille, which I think is such a cool concept for a series. So definitely on the hunt for those. I like the little whiskers I made and the little nose and I just think this is perfect and complements the pin collection quite nicely. I wanted to paint this one with a darker background just so the white chef hat pops as much as Remy pops off of the backgrounds of these pins. I feel like this one's actually a challenge. You may not know what it is from the back. It's my pin trading pin collection or my meta pin collection as I'd like to call it. I am super impressed with this one. Before I was painting the background, I kind of was disappointed with how I painted the lanyard, but it all came together once I decided to add all of the little Mickey like, pins on it and then making the background kind of like the sky. Um, so it's kind of like you're trading at Disney World on a nice, beautiful, sunny day. I had the general idea to have pins on a lanyard within the board, and it is perfect for the pins about pins. I know there are six pins within the set. I decided to get rid of the other three that I used to have. I have another one further down on the board. Wanna trade, happy trading. Like there's just my favorite ones. Like of course I always wanna trade and it's just like the stages of a trade. Like do you wanna trade? And then when you're done trading, it's happy trading. And then this one is when you're actually looking for the pins online and posting your ISO. Like that's me, Mickey is me. And then this is pin trading at a real person live event. Like, oh my goodness, it's been, it's been a long time since we've had an in-person meetup in Canada, hoping hopefully next year we're going to start up those again. And then this stitch pin is a fantasy pin. He looks like, oh my gosh, I didn't do it. I'm not the one that bought all the pins. I, they were trades. I swear. I swear I'm innocent. They weren't purchases. I heart Disney pins. I mean, what gave it away? I used to have a Minnie and Mickey collection, which I showed way further back on my channel. I downsized a lot, honestly, most of them. I have a couple of them on my pin trading backpack right now. Not sure if I'm gonna make another canvas for them yet or not, but I do have them pin trading here. And Mickey is about to give Minnie his pin and they have lanyards. It's kind of like, not only are they pin meta boards, but they're just trading meta boards. Like they're wearing their lanyards. And then this whole board is of a lanyard. And I thought this one fit perfectly over here on the lanyard. Welcome to Trade City USA, a beautiful place to trade. I always call the US the pin capital of the world just because I always assume if they don't tell me where they're from, they're from the US, it's the default, and honestly, 99% of the time, I am right, just because so many people in Florida and California, of course, because of their home parks, being Disney World and Disneyland, but then just in general, like, even all across the states, it just, they're everywhere. I am so excited to stick the private pin collection, not for trade pin, on whatever collection that I am displaying in my pin backpack. It's just like to make it clear that this is not for trade. Like I literally have a pin to tell them these aren't my trading pins. Like how amazing is that, honestly? It's from the same series as the Welcome to Trade City USA pin. And then we have pin trading tails. I'm not in love with having years if the year doesn't mean anything to me, but this pin in general means so much. Like I have so many pin trading tails, so many stories. I feel like I could make a separate video with a bunch of those stories. And then it says every pin tells a story and it's like you have a little pin of a jellyfish on here. And it comes out, you see Dory and Marlin 
going through the jellyfish and finding Nemo. But I want to keep it inside for now. And then I got this pin trading Disneyland pin. There's also one that's exactly the same that says Disney World. And once again, pin meta lanyard pin. But this time it's kind of popping out ya. I, <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't call this a pin on pin just because it's like of a string but oh my gosh like look at it in comparison to my fingers it is a pretty hefty pin and then of course i've shown these on my channel before the pin trading comic series let's go pin trading i've lost our pins and lanyards gotta find our pins oh mickey you're my hero golly like wow what a saga that was so I showed this on my channel quite recently. It's the biggest canvas I've made, but the simplest too, because it's just the Italian colors. Just because I know there's quite a bit of pins in this collection, I didn't want to do something super elaborate that would take away from the pins. Whereas all of my other collections, I added some sort of design on the pin board. It just stripes that I think it's really nice and it brings out the colors on all the pins. I'm really happy with my current Italy collection. I'm not particularly looking for more, but if I could trade, of course I won't say no. Okay, so I lied when I said the other one was the biggest. This clearly is, and there's the most pins on it. And as you can see, they are not Mickey back, so it's actually not a Disney pin collection. It's my theater pin collection. It definitely had a glow up since I showed the collection last on this channel. Um, not in terms of pins, I didn't add any yet. Um, still in lockdown here, haven't seen any new plays. But I've left room for all the plays that I have seen that I didn't make the playbill pins for yet. And I lined it up so it's actually in order from the first play I've ever seen to the most recent play I've ever seen. So I made it look like an actual stage with the curtains and the spotlights and then the stage. And then I left room for more at the bottom. Another non-Disney board, but this time I actually have not shown these pins on the channel yet. My cruise pin collection. There was no doubt in my mind what kind of background I wanted with this just because a cruise, it had to be water. For the most part, I've gotten these pins on the actual cruise ship. On my pin journey video when I said my Build-A-Bear pin was my first pin, technically this was my first pin, um, but it wasn't in my possession. Like, I don't know, my mom got it on the cruise and then it was just in a photo album, like in its plastic. And then before I moved here, I found it when going through old photos. So, I mean, technically I guess it wasn't mine, but it was like in my house for over a decade. So it's debatable if this was my first pin ever. I don't think I ever saw it until I discovered it though, like years later. I was struggling to try to find a simple drawing of a cruise ship and I kind of took bits and pieces of different drawings I found on Google Images and made it my own. This one took me the longest to draw out and make sure it was perfect, but I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. So I went on the Carnival Triumph and Valor. I thought it was cute that I put the Valor as actually a part of the ship on the board. And then I don't think Princess makes their own pins specific to each ship. I know they have just Princess in general pins, but I thought it was perfect that it says Princess Cruises Caribbean because obviously they mean the Caribbean as the place, but the actual ship I went on was the Princess Caribbean, so thought it was like a best of both worlds type of scenario. <laughs> because I also took that ship to the Caribbean. Freedom of the Seas, I actually went on the ship twice, once with my family when I was younger and once with some friends. Wow, if this pin could talk, it would have a lot of stories about that trip. Royal Caribbean actually stopped making pins of their specific ships, so there is no Oasis of the Seas pin that's similar to this, but I found a pin that says Oasis and it looks like a beach. So it's still the same vibe. The Norwegian Epic and the Norwegian Breakaway. It was cool, I got to stay in New York and of course see some plays and add to that collection as well. And then this is just a general cruise pin, but Royal Caribbean does have that anchor on their logo. And I went to the Anthem of the Seas and then we got the mascot of the Carnival cruise ship, Fun Ship Freddy. They literally made it part of the ship. Like this is what it looks like on the actual ship, like this. They made him a mascot. They slapped a face on him and literally made him 
the mascot, which is honestly iconic. I remember I met him on the ship, I was having the time of my life, and I got him to sign my stuffed animal of him. So as you can see with my cruise one, my theater one, and then this one, I kind of took all the pins off of my experience board and put them on their respective canvases. It's a microphone, who would have guessed from the back, you know? But yeah, this is my concert board. It is super bare, even though I've been to way more concerts than this. It's just super rare for there to be a pin at a concert, way more rare than a play. I'm actually the most impressed with this microphone I made out of all of the pin boards. So impressed, I didn't even need to make a background. I just wanted to make a statement with like the black microphone and then the white background. And I did it with paint and then I used Sharpie. I was not kidding around. I did not want to mess up with the paint here. I feel like it would just get black everywhere so I use black sharpie and you could barely tell the difference between the sharpie and the paint which is awesome this one's from the Ed Sheeran concert I went to in 2017 for the divide tour Katy Perry for her witness tour although she sang mostly her older hits so that was amazing Britney Spears for the Vegas residency which was such an incredible show like Britney Spears was my childhood. I know I'm a little young to say that. Like her prime, I was like three years old, but I grew up like on VHS. I would watch her concert videos from Vegas at five years old on repeat. I think this is so cute because it's a guitar pick too. This one's not from the actual Demi Lovato concert, but I did see the tour that supported this album. So good live. Selena Gomez, I've seen three times in concert. She used to be my fave. Serena and Selena, I mean, it's only natural, come on. Um, but Ariana is my fave. If you're wondering why I don't have a pin of hers on here, it's because I have a whole separate collection for that. <laughs> Charlie Puth, which like I'm not even keeping up with his stuff right now, but the voice notes tour, I just liked that album. And finally, a Harry Styles pin. I love how this one you you would have no clues Harry Styles unless like you know his album. It's none of your business because his song called Kiwi, it says that. I definitely did not paint this, but as a little bonus, I wanted to show you another pin design pin board. It's a foam core and I actually got it at my local Staples, got it custom done. It's my club penguin board, which I have not added to since last summer, just because I have 19 out of 20 of the club penguin pins from the two mystery boxes. I'm not super interested in the last one. It's not even on my ISO because it doesn't even look like a penguin. Like, I don't know, it's weird. Like I see the general shape of the penguin, but it's only because I know it's a penguin. If I had no idea where it was from, that's the last thing I would guess it is. And then there are some club penguin pins that are kind of super rare and not within those two sets. I don't see them ever, but if I ever saw them, I would add to this board like in the snow. Foam core. If you put a penguin, a penguin, if you put a pin in the foam core and then you take it out and you move it, it is way more noticeable than cork or even the canvas. So that is why this was the perfect collection to do it with because I knew I wouldn't be moving them. That's it for my pin canvases that I've painted over the last couple months. And honestly, most of them most recently this month. And I would love to know in the comments below what your favorite canvas that I painted was. I honestly don't know what my favorite one is. I feel like they really complement the pins very well. And I was very mindful of like, how I placed them, the backgrounds, and how big the design was and everything, and also leaving room to grow. If you haven't already, please subscribe for more pin-related content from me every Tuesday. And for all of you returning watchers, thank you so much. I appreciate your support. Yes, I did get a haircut. It is my first haircut since I started this channel back in December, actually, because I got my haircut in November, and then I was gonna get it cut in like, April, but then everything shut down in Ontario for the third time and it only opened up in June. So then I finally got a haircut. So thanks for noticing for y'all that did. <laughs> and as always, take care of yourselves and have a magical day. Bye.